our team's fighting, we really just want to stay in the back line right here. Avoid as much damage as possible. That's a Guan Yu ultimate. 2 1 combo again. We're going to blink out because we're taking damage. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the Ice Dance. Keep casting damage from range. Our team's getting pushed hard. We're going to throw off some damage. They're all collapsing on Bacchus right now. We're going to blink in, switch over to our Fire Stance, get some burn damage off, get the pick onto the Capri. We're able to clean him up with the burn damage. Now it's just Agni and Guan Yu. We're going to blink past the Guan Yu, switch over to the Agni, get the pick onto him. Now we're going to try to get some damage onto this Guan Yu, try to connect it for a quadra kill. Unfortunately, he's a very tanky boy, and he's dealing more damage to us than we are to him. We do have our alternate timeline proc, but I don't think this fight's going to happen. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're doing a skin showcase for the fun guy Merlin in mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. As always, the full build is in the description down below. If you are a returning viewer, Merlin is one of my favorite mages. He's just really fun to play. He has three stances to switch between, and the skin is absolutely fantastic. I like the hippie vibes. I like the mushroom vibes. So let's go ahead and jump into Merlin's kit. Merlin has three stances. He has the purple stance, the red stance, and the blue stance. In the purple stance, Merlin's one. Merlin's going to throw out an orb that's going to grow in size as it travels. If it hits an enemy, it's going to mark them. Enemies that stand within the marked radius are going to take damage. Merlin's one in the red stance. Merlin's going to shoot out a flame in front of him that's going to tick. Enemies that are hit are going to take burn damage. Merlin's one in the blue stance. Merlin's going to throw a frost bolt that's going to explode if it hits an enemy. It's going to deal an additional 15% damage if the enemy is slowed. Merlin's two in the purple stance. Merlin's going to deploy a field of arcane energy at a location. After delay, it's going to pull enemies towards the center. Merlin's 2 in the fire stance. Merlin's going to summon two dragons that are going to spout flames towards each other, dealing damage every 0.25 seconds. If caught in the center of the area, enemy gods are going to have their protections reduced. The dragons last for 3 seconds. The protection reduction is 4%. Merlin's 2 in the ice form. Merlin's going to create a blizzard at a location that's going to deal damage every 0.5 seconds. Enemies hit are going to be slowed if they stay in the area. Merlin's 3, Flicker. Merlin's going to quickly teleport a short distance in front of him. Merlin's ultimate, Elemental Mastery. This allows Merlin to switch to different stances. Merlin's going to tap into his inner energy, explode with energy, and then change stances. During this time, Merlin can choose which stance he wants to enter next. After the explosion explodes, it's going to implode. Enemies are dealt damage from both the explosion and the implosion, and are going to suffer different effects depending on which stance they are hit by. For the fire stance, the enemy is going to take burn damage. For the ice stance, they're going to be slowed by 20%. And for the arcane stance, they're going to be knocked up. And finally, we have Merlin's passive, overload. Every time Merlin casts a spell, he gains a stack of overload. When Merlin next fires a basic attack, it will be augmented with lightning, dealing extra damage to the first enemy hit. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1. Level 2, put a point to our 2. Level 3, put another point to our 1. Level 4, put a point to our 3. Then we want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 1, max out our 2, max out our 3. This game, if you hear me call Merlin's flicker, blink. I'm referring to his flicker. We are not picking up blink. And it feels like a blink. So I'm going to call it a blink. In terms of the start, we started with Sands of Time. Tier 1 of Spear of Desolation. Some health potions and one mana potion. Sands of Time is going to provide us 30 magical power, 10 MP5, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that this item grants 2 MP5 per 10% of your missing mana. So we are not very strong in the early game. We're really just going to be clearing minion waves and kind of hanging back. We went with beads for our relic. We're gonna go ahead and rotate up to this Nasha. That's his dash. We can get some damage on the Agni. Do a little bit of zoning with her too. We're gonna go ahead and pick up the red buff and just fall back.
strong four. I think this skin is really cool. It does have a special emote as well, which is always bonus points for me whenever it comes to skins. Your left tower is under attack. We're gonna go ahead and pick up our red buff and then head back to mid. I feel like the animations look almost exactly the same as the regular Merlin skin. Although it's got kind of a multicolor effect to it, which I think looks pretty cool. Agni has his dash, so we can't be too aggressive right here. We're gonna go ahead, use our fire stance. Ooh, we're trying to bait him up a little bit with the back right there. I feel like our fire stance is our most vulnerable stance. Mainly because our one shoots out from right in front of us instead of it being the ability that we can cast away from us. We're going to go ahead and start working on the harpies, trying to hit as many mid camps as possible. I feel like the purple stance is the easiest stance in the sense that like you can just cast your abilities and fall back. We're going to blink up. Then I feel like your ice stance is really good for mid-range fights and then your fire stance is whenever you want to get in there and deal a lot of damage we do have enough money for our boots so you're probably going to be looking to back right here i take it back his animations actually look really cool the additional colors make a pretty big difference we're gonna go ahead and pick up the lifesteal boots that's just going to give us some additional power we're going to get our cooldown elsewhere in the build. We already have 10% from Sands of Time. Oh, your friends are falling like flies. Right now we're using Merlin's special emote. I feel like this Agni is actually pretty decent. He knows his spacing and he's not really giving me any free real estate. So if we're gonna put pressure on Agni, we gotta be pretty smart about it. Take this jungle buff. Find my way. Thanks. Completed. Very chill. <laughs> we get hit by the Agni ult. I'm gonna try to hit him with the one. We're able to get a little bit of damage off. Right now he's clearing a little bit more effectively than we are. We take a lot of damage. We're gonna go ahead and switch over to our void stance, our safest stance. I do feel like our jungler is helping us out a little bit more than the enemy jungler. And of course the enemy jungler is a Gilgamesh. I feel like every game, at least every other game, is a Gilgamesh jungle these days. Hopefully that will die down soon. We're going to see if we can get this Agni to step up. We hit him with a 2-1 combo. We get his dash. When you're in the purple stance, I feel like if you can hit the enemy with your two and then cast your one, you're more likely to get all of your damage off than if you do the one two. Also, I want to call the purple stance void stance. The game likes to call it arcane energy, but I played a lot of destiny and I feel like it should be void. We're gonna go ahead, rotate back to our red buff, pick that up. Right now we do have a level on Agni. We did have two levels on him at one point. We hear the enemy Gilgamesh nearby. Enemy missing middle. Oh 
on my way. We're gonna go ahead and make an appearance in right. We see that Gogo Mesh is over there. They are pushing our team pretty hard right now. They're all very weak. We get the pick onto the Gogo Mesh. We get some damage onto the Capri. That's an Apollo ultimate. We're gonna flicker in. We're able to get ourselves a double kill. If that Apollo did not ult away, we probably would have had a triple kill right there. Be back in a gif. I think almost all of our kills this game are multi-kills. We don't get individual picks. We show up in team fights and get a lot of picks. Next, we're going to go ahead and pick up the Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation is going to provide us 110 magical power, 10 flat magic penetration, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that getting a kill or an assist on an enemy god is going to reduce all of your cooldowns by 2 seconds and reduce your ultimate by 8 seconds. So the way that flat penetration works is if we take a look at our magical defense, right now we have 39 magical protections. So let's go ahead and round that up to 40 and assume that Agni has 40 magical protections. We're going to be dealing damage to Agni with 10 flat pen as if Agni only had 30 magical protections instead of 40. We're going to go ahead and blink away. That's Agni's dash, but Kepri's here, so we gotta be very careful. We're gonna go ahead and use our beads. Throw out our two, throw out our one, get some great damage on the both of them. So right now, our flat pen is acting like a 20% penetration against these squishy targets. So it's really effective in the early game. Our red buff is up. That is something we should have gone for in between waves. Bacchus is going deep for that Agni. We're going to try to rotate up, help him out a little bit, make sure he can get out safely. It looks like he's good. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our Void. If Agni oversteps, we might be able to get a pick right here. He dashes away. We're able to get some damage onto the Capri. Gilgamesh is here. We're going to use our Blink to get away from the Gilgamesh. We do not have Deeds. We're in a little bit of trouble right here. Unfortunately, Bacchus was also in a little bit of trouble, so he wasn't able to provide any peel for us, and we go down. We're going to go ahead and buy the tier 1 of Cronus' Pendant, pick up 2 potions and 2 wards. I definitely feel like late game, Gilgamesh is more impactful as a soul laner than he is as a jungler. This Chiron, this game actually gives us a run for our money in terms of player damage. He had a pretty good game. Looks like that Apollo just used his ultimate. We're going to go ahead and clear wave. He's coming right to us. I don't know if we see it in game. We do not. Oh no. Anyway, our support is able to clean him up. We have comms with our support. We're telling Bacchus to ward on those two corners. We set up the defensive wards. We want our support to set up the offensive wards. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our ice stance. Clear the harpies and then rotate back to mid. I think cooldown on Merlin is pretty important. It's just going to allow you to just cast your abilities more often, switch stances, and then cast even more abilities more often. Get our one up onto the Kepri. I don't think we have any clean way of getting all of our damage off onto this Agni right now. There's Agni's dash. We're going to switch over to the Void Stance. Throw off our two. Throw off our one. Get some great damage onto him. But now we're going to have to fall back. That is a Kepri ultimate down. Throw out some damage onto this Kepri. Ooh, and he's barely able to get out. And our support goes down. That was a very unlucky turn of events right there. On my 
We're gonna rotate over to this Chiron, try to help him out. Looks like he ran away deep. Chiron's able to get the pick. Agni's here, we're gonna go ahead and use our blink. Paul's also nearby. Teammates are able to pick up the Agni. Now would be a great time to get the Greatest Scorpion. So we're going to go ahead and rotate there with Chiron. The Greatest Scorpions are a lot easier to kill since the 8.4 update whenever they change their protections and health. We now have an Enhanced Red, which is going to provide us additional Magical Lifesteal. We should definitely be using our special emote more. Kind of disappointed in ourselves for not doing that. Bacchus is guiding us to Harpies, so we're not going to say no. Going to keep getting that free XP whenever we can. Yoga Mesh is rotating right. We're going to kind of match his rotation. We were just checking the price of Chrono Suspended. It's 2150 so we're getting very close. Bacchus is in a little bit of trouble. Actually, he's completely fine. I think Sands of Time, ever since they buffed it in the, I think it was 8.3 and 8.4, I feel like it's a lot more of a viable item. I've been picking it up on a lot more of my characters than I have been with Conduit Gem. Chronos Dependent is going to provide us 100 magical power, 20 MP5, and 20% cooldown reduction. It has a passive of every 10 seconds. We're going to subtract 1 second from all of your abilities currently on cooldown. Your friends are falling like flies. Too bad. Too bad. So right now we're sitting at 40% cooldown, which is the max. If we build any more cooldown, it is not going to do anything for us. I do think that one of the upgrades for the Conduit Gem, the Gem of Focus, is actually really good on Merlin. We see a bunch of people at Gold Fury. We're going to go ahead and rotate in. We're going to throw our Ice 2, 1, switch over to the Fire Stance, cast some abilities, and we're able to get a triple kill. It was really, we saw them all there. We're just going to dump our kit in that area. Don't think we were really aiming for anyone in particular. We just saw a group in and dropped our kit. With three people down, we can push something right here. Gilgamesh can solo that. I don't think he needs us. We're going to switch over to our ice stance. Start falling back. This Guan Yu is pretty tanky. Now that we don't have our support, we're going to start falling back. That's Apollo's dash. We can kill him right here. We get our one off. Kepri uses his ultimate. We're actually in a little bit of trouble. Four people here. We use our beads. We get pulled right after using our beads and we go down. Maybe we shouldn't have tried to help out with that Gilgamesh. Maybe we should have just ran to the tier 2 tower.
We're gonna go ahead and start working on Rod of Tahuti. Chiron went deep for it. He uses his dash. Now he's getting pinched by three people. Arbacus is able to clean up one. Chiron's also able to clean up one. So if we take a look at our passive, it has three circles up top and then three kind of diamonds down below. The three circles up top are your three forms and whatever one is kind of glowing is going to be the form that you're in. Then the three diamonds at the bottom are part of your passive. So if you cast abilities, those are going to light up, meaning that your next basic attack is going to deal additional damage. We cast some abilities over the wall, but the enemy team is able to kind of just run away. Almost all of Merlin's abilities go through walls, so we do want to kind of hug these corners in team fights and use that to our advantage. So we saw Chiron dropping our red. He seems to be having a good game, so we're like, just take it. No skin off our back. I'm building stacks, man. Okay. Okay. Pretty sure this Chiron's going more of an ability-based build than a attack speed-based build. Guan Yu goes down. He's probably their tankiest character. Capri's tanky, but Guan Yu's annoyingly tanky because he's also dealing a lot of damage. Looks like our team's going to make a play for Fire Giant. We are able to secure the Fire Giant. That's going to give everyone on our team a lot of MP5 and HP5, so we're going to heal during these fights. And it's also going to allow us to deal more damage to structures. We're going to push this Apollo back, make sure he can't get a free Phoenix. Ooh, we do have enough money for Rod of Dehuti, so we should be backing for that pretty soon. Bit of a team fight going on. We're going to try to rotate up to it, help out. It is now a 5v4. Apollo ult is down. That is a Capri ultimate. We're going to go ahead and cast some abilities. We got some damage onto the Capri and the Agni. Chiron's able to clean up both. We're gonna go ahead and just keep pushing this lane. It is a 4v5. We should be able to siege a Phoenix right here. Although our carry is running away instead of pushing one of these Phoenixes. So I actually don't think we're gonna be able to get one of these Phoenixes. That's unfortunate. I think we probably could have gotten the middle Phoenix if we had Chiron there. We're able to get the pick onto the Gogo Mesh. We see Guan Yu ulting in, so we're just gonna keep running away. Yeah. Any new friends over here? I'm gonna go ahead and get the Gold Fury started. We have a fat penny in the pocket. 
You might be able to get Rod of Duty plus an item, or at least a tier two of an item. Oh, how greedy are we gonna be? Okay, good, we do need to back. We're gonna go ahead and pick up Rod of Duty. Rod of Duty is gonna provide us 140 magical power, 30 MP5, and 10% magic penetration. It has a passive that basic attacks and abilities gain 25% additional magical power against targets below 50% health. Then we're going to start working on Soul Reaver. So Rod of Tehuti is going to really help us start confirming some of these skills. Just gives us so much power, that 10% magic pen and also some MP5. On my way. I'm going to cast some abilities through the walls, avoid the Guan Yu. That's Guan Yu ult. Looks like we're going to try to loop around this back side of this team fight. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the Ice Dance. Try to keep our range. We don't want to dive in with Fire Stance. We blink up. Our blink's on cooldown, so we need to be very careful right here. Our support's able to get a double, and we should be able to siege. We're able to get the middle phoenix. Are we going to try to go for an end? No, we're going to play it a little bit smarter and just get the second phoenix. This will give us a ton of map pressure. Follows on us, we're going to use our beads, cast our fire abilities, switch on over to the ice. I feel like that ice is the great balance between long range and close range. You can use it for either. It's just us, we're able to get the pick onto the Gilgamesh. We're going to blink up, avoid the sun from the Agni. He just used his abilities. We're going to go ahead and get some damage onto him. I think he's fully on cooldown. I'm gonna throw off our two, get a little bit of damage. Guan Yu's ulting in, so we're gonna blink away. We gotta cast our fire abilities. That is a Kevry ultimate down. We're gonna blink up. This Guan Yu is very troublesome. That's an Apollo ultimate. We use our Aegis. And Apollo is able to burn us down. Unfortunate, we definitely overstayed our welcome. We were trying to fight there. We had a we had plenty of options to get out right there. However, we chose to stay and keep fighting. Next, we're going to be picking up the alternate timeline. Alternate timelines can provide us 45 magic power, 45 physical and magical protections, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that when you would die, instead you find a timeline where you are still alive and become CC immune, damage immune, and unable to act. After 1.75 seconds, you are restored to 25% of your health and mana and can act again. This can only occur once every 6 minutes. So it's kind of a get out of jail free card. It's going to allow us to just basically res right there. Sorry. Yeah, boy, we're in that special emote. Connecting to the cosmos. Oh, <laughs> those the little animation of the little lines around us, that's the alternate timeline. For some reason, I thought it was part of the skin. Looks good with the skin. Our team is deep up there. It's a 3v4. 3v3. 2v3. We're trying to rotate up. Teammates in a little bit of trouble. We're going to get some damage off. We're going to blink away from the Agni damage. Switch on over to the Void Stance. Has 
You get blink up, switch our fire stance. And Bacchus is able to get the pick onto the Capri. Between the three of us. Ooh, that was a terrible call by me. We probably could have ended right there. Yeah, I think we could have ended right there. Not my best call. It was a 3v1 and they were down for enough time for us to probably end. Oh, it's gonna be close. We are able to secure the fire giant. I think four people have it. Nejal's the only one that's not gonna have it. And we're gonna go ahead back and pick up Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is gonna provide us 95 magical power, 300 mana. It has a passive that your abilities deal an additional 2% of the target's maximum health. If the target had over 2,000 health, your ability damage is gonna scale up. This effect reaches 9% max health if the enemy had 2,750 health or more. Subsequent hits on the same target are gonna deal half the bonus damage for the next three seconds. We're gonna go ahead get some damage onto that Capri. We really want to keep our range right here. Our team is around to support us. That is an Agni Dash. We're gonna cast our 2 1 combo. Start falling back. Our team's fighting. We really just want to stay in the back line right here. Avoid as much damage as possible. That's a Guan Yu Ultimate. 2 1 combo again. We're gonna blink out because we're taking damage. We're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Ice Dance. Keep casting damage from range. Our team's getting pushed hard. We're gonna throw off some damage. They're all collapsing on Bacchus right now. We're gonna blink in, switch over to our fire stance, get some burn damage off, get the pick onto the Capri. We're able to clean him up with the burn damage. Now it's just Agni and Guan Yu. We're gonna blink past the Guan Yu, switch over to the Agni, get the pick onto him. Now we're gonna try to get some damage onto this Guan Yu, try to connect it for a quadra kill. Unfortunately, he's a very tanky boy and he's dealing more damage to us than we are to him. We do have our alternate timeline proc but I don't think this fight's gonna happen. He's just running away. Well, Guan Yu is cleaning up the minions on the Titan. We're gonna get some damage onto the Phoenix. That is the mid phoenix down. We might be able to end right here. We definitely had our opportunities this game. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.